The goose is a tiny beaked menace which you may recognize from the Untitled Goose Game. Well, today you'll get to learn even more about this walking, flying ear horn. Let's start off with the names. As with most animal names, the name goose stems from European origins, or wherever Germany and Dutchland are. I'm American, I don't know geography. Anyways, the plural for goose is geese. But here's the weird thing, the word goose isn't actually used to refer to the general species itself for some reason. Male geese are called ganders, and female geese are actually the only ones that get called goose. Of course, the proper term used for female geese is dame, but I think only British people would bother doing that. They're probably the ones that name female geese dames in the first place. A group of geese on land are called a gaggle, mostly due to how loud and annoying they are. And for once in the English language, there's a specific number for when a group of geese qualifies as a gaggle. It's five geese. Five or more geese make a gaggle. Then there are other terms like skein and team, which are usually for referring to a group of geese in flight. There's also a wedge of geese, which is used for a group of geese packed closely together, either in the sky or on water. And there's still like a dozen more terms for overly specific scenarios I won't bother going through. I don't know who had the time to come up with so many different names for a group of geese, each with their own unique and unnecessarily detailed qualifications. But for the most part, simply calling a group of geese a flock applies no matter where they are, which would save you the trouble of having to remember the other dozen terms. Baby geese, on the other hand, are called goslings. The most common term used for referring to a group of goslings is a brood of goslings. You can still apply gaggle and flock as you see fit, or just use some other generic bird terms such as nestlings or fledglings. All of these are fine. As of date, there are at least 30 different recorded species of geese, with geese being found mostly in North America and Europe. And out of all the countries, Canada is the country with the highest population of geese. Geese first appeared around 10 to 12 million years ago, which means they've existed about 40 times longer than humans. The largest recorded species of geese to ever exist was the Gargantornis balmani, which literally has the prefix for gargantuan in it. The Gargantornis balmani stood at a whopping 1.5 meters tall, and this gargantuan goose was flightless. Rather than using its wings for flying, it decided to use its wings to pummel the ever-loving shit out of any predator that dares to prey on them. But fortunately for the Canadians, they went extinct a long time ago, so no need to worry about your children being mauled by a giant goose. Now onto some facts about geese behaviors. If you've ever been attacked by a goose, then you'll know that geese are super aggressive. Thankfully, they only get aggressive around mating season. Geese also happen to be highly territorial, which brings me to my business campaign. Who needs guard dogs when you can have guard geese? Anyways, the increased aggression during mating season is explained by how protective geese are of their families. As for how protective they are, well, let's just say they would make Vin Diesel proud. Oh, and mating season usually happens between March and December, so I recommend staying away from geese during these months unless you want to become a victim of a wild goose attack. Geese families actually function quite similarly to human families, with geese choosing only one mate to be with for life. Except unlike humans, there are no messy divorces in child custody cases. Their protective nature makes them quite the social animals. For example, if their mate or young got sick or injured, they will refuse to leave their side, even if it means missing the migration period. It's a behavior that some human deadbeat fathers should take a page out of. When a goose's lifelong mate dies, the remaining partner will actually go into mourning for up to two years. The mourning process is also fairly similar to humans. They become listless and despondent, refusing to eat and drooping their heads sometimes even crying by honking in a melancholic tone. Who would have ever thought that geese could get depressed? However, their grieving isn't limited to only their mates. If a gosling dies, the parent will first go into a state of panic trying to find the gosling, refusing to leave the area and accept the deaths of their young, until eventually accepting the fact and grieving over their loss. All of this kind of makes you empathetic towards geese and start questioning the emotional depths of geese and the extent of their emotional capabilities. It also adds a twinge of guilt the next time you eat geese meat. However, while most geese may only have one mate for life, 
It only applies to wild geese. Domesticated geese have been known to have harems, which is undoubtedly thanks to the influence of the humans around them. It just goes to show that if you have any animals stay around humans long enough, they become a bit of an asshole. Despite how bloodthirsty geese are, they're herbivores for the most part, eating seeds, nuts, grass, berries, plants, and weeds. Which explains their goopy and slimy green shits that they splatter all over the sidewalks. And because weeds are part of a goose's diet, they've had a history of being used as agricultural tools. Got weeds? Well, just buy some geese and they'll clear up all the weeds for you. And probably all of your crops too, unless you train them. Probably not worse to hassle though. And because geese are birds, they will occasionally eat insects too. You know, typical bird stuff. And bugs are just convenient to eat. They're everywhere. Geese will also migrate twice a year, once in fall and once in spring. But not every species migrates, one of them being the Hawaiian goose, the nene. I mean, do I even have to explain why they don't migrate? It's Hawaii. Anyways, when geese migrate, they usually do so in flocks, with flocks sometimes numbering in the thousands, which happens when multiple flocks converge into a single flock during their migration journey. And sometimes you can even see those thousands of geese landing, like a swarm of locusts. Geese also have this fun little biological feature that allows them to cool down by panting, just like dogs do. But don't expect to see panting geese that often. Panting is more of a last resort, since geese usually just cool down by swimming around in some nice cool water. A panting goose usually means that they're overheating. As for egg laying, Dames typically only lay eggs once a year, usually during spring from February to March, laying anywhere between 2 to 9 eggs in a single clutch with the quantity varying between species. Certain species like the Chinese goose can even lay between 50 to 100 eggs per year. On average, geese eggs take about a month to fully incubate and hatch. When the eggs finally do hatch, goslings, like most birds, imprint onto the first moving scene they see meaning that if you ever decide to buy some geese eggs, there exists the possibility of your Roomba becoming a parent of your goslings. Now, geese belong to the Anaptidae family, which is a family of water birds. But despite being classified as waterfowls, they enjoy spending more time on land, terrorizing humans. Geese have also been known to enjoy making DIY nest improvements over time, with some even plucking out their own feathers to insulate their nest despite the pain of doing so. Now, onto some of the physical specs for geese. Geese are on the larger side when it comes to birds, standing at an average of 3 feet tall and having a 4 foot wingspan, weighing about 10 pounds for most species. Wild geese will live around 10 to 15 years, and as with most cases, domestic geese can live longer when given proper care allowing you to increase their lifespans to 20 or 30 years. The oldest goose to ever live was a gander named George, born in 1927 and living all the way until 1976, living a total of almost 50 years. As for feathers, geese have over 20,000 of them on average, which, when you look at a goose, it's hard to imagine there are 20,000 feathers on that mass of anarchy. Then again, I guess the same applies for human here. During flight, a goose can reach up to altitudes of 4.5 miles high, and can also travel around 1,500 miles in a single day, which is made possible by their ability to fly up to 70 miles per hour in the right conditions. So you can probably have a road race with a goose and you might not even win. However, despite all of these unbalanced stats, geese do have one critical weakness, molting. Molting may only happen once a year, but during the molting season, for 30 to 45 days, a goose is rendered flightless. They become a sitting duck. Well, a sitting goose in this case, I suppose. Anyways, during this molting period, geese will camp out in open waters to protect themselves. So if you ever feel like kidnapping a couple of geese, wait for molting season to come around and bring a swimsuit. You'll probably also need a first aid kit for yourself. Kidnappies never come willingly. Now, if you somehow ever happen to find yourself in a standoff with some unwanted geese in front of your home that you want to get rid of, you may want to consult Sun Tzu's Art of War, an employer siege or blockade tactic to cut off their food sources and starve the geese out so they leave. Now, as usual, let's end scenes off with some bonus facts. 
Predators for geese normally consist of coyotes and bobcats, with snapping turtles, foxes, skunks, crows, and raccoons going after goslings or unhatched eggs. But of course, you can't forget about humans. We also prey on geese. We eat just about anything we can get our hands on, or at least the average American does. Geese-related terms are also used fairly often in sayings. Here are some that you're probably familiar with: "silly goose," which is when someone is behaving foolishly; "have a gander" is taking a quick look or inspection; a wild goose chase is when you're foolishly chasing something unattainable; and much like how a donkey and a horse can make a crossbred mule. You can mess around and smush a goose and a swan together and produce a swoosh. And due to inbreeding, which is different from incest, but that's another video for another day. Anyways, because of this, geese will often experience fertility issues, which means that even before chickens, humans were already extorting geese from their eggs. Since most of the eggs would never be fertilized, it meant that the chance of cracking an egg open and seeing a half-baked embryo lying on your plate was significantly lower. And lastly, geese can actually sleep while flying and floating on water by using unihemispheric sleep. Humans can also do this, except it usually involves vehicular manslaughter. In conclusion, wild geese may be one of the less interesting birds. They will forever be known as the funny, honking kleptomaniac, and also objects of abject terror.